Okay, so uh, welcome to the next unit on the module on addressing mode instruction set and ex instru instruction execution flow. So, uh, till now whatever we were discussing basically what are the different in type of instructions, how it looks, what are the formats, what are the different components of an instruction and in all the cases if you observe we were just assuming or thinking that the instructions would execute in a very sequential manner. That is first the instruction may load something from the memory, then it may do some memory operation addition operation, subtraction operation and then it will again write to the memory. So, in fact, we are assuming that everything would go in a very sequential flow, but as all of us have written some C code or any, any high level language code in our life. So, we are we, we, it is very obvious to us that there is nothing which is very sequential in a code. That means, every time you will have some logic and it will depend on some input conditions and based on that you will either jump to another instruction or you will continue like a loop based on some instruction you will go back to the loop and based on the exit condition you will exit out of the loop. In other words, a very very important concept which we need to understand when you are looking at instruction format and execution of instructions is that we always have some conditions and based on the conditions some of the instructions will execute the next instructions or jump to some other instruction which will be executed once the conditions are satisfied. In fact, they are called as a conditional instruction and without a conditional instruction no coding paradigm is complete. So, along with conditional instruction in this unit we are going to look at flags and conditional instructions. So, conditional instructions are very sim similar to our like our if then else statement, while conditions, jump, loops etcetera, but whenever we say something like uh, if x is greater than y then do something. So, in high level language we have a condition like x is greater than y and how a condition is internally checked in a hardware or in your CPU is basically depending on certain kind of flag registers or a registers are there and there are some bits which are actually set or reset depending on some conditions and your conditional instruction actually checks those flag and then decide what to do. So, this unit will be dedicated to such conditional instructions and what are the flags and how they correlate and how they are executed. So, this is about the instruction unit number 7 of this module on flags and conditional instructions. So, as we are looking at hardware the term flag is actually coming with the conditional instructions, but on a high level language version we generally talk about conditional instructions like if then else for loops etcetera. So, as the whole course is uh, based on pedagogical aspect, so what is the unit summary? So, or what we are going to look in this unit? So, basically this unit will be mainly focusing on that there are certain instructions whose executions are not sequential, they actually depend on conditions. So, actually they, as you all know there is something called program counter which will help us to know what is the next instruction. So, if there is no conditional instruction as such then the program counter increments by 1, but whenever there is a conditional instruction based on the truth of the condition the program counter value changes and it jumps to the required instruction. So, there are two type of conditional instruction that is conditional branch and unconditional branch. Conditional branching means from statement x you go to statement y or you just execute statement x plus 1 that is next instruction depending on some condition like if x, x is greater than y then you execute the next instruction and if it is false you jump to some other memory location and execute the instruction there. But there are some unconditional jumps also uh, unconditional statement that you come here and then jump to such and such memory location execute the instruction there without waiting for any condition or without validating any condition that is jump unconditional that is just like a function call. So, you come over here without any condition you just execute the instruction which is corresponding to the function which is being called. So, they are actually unconditional jump instructions. So, in this unit basically we are going to look at uh, what are conditional inst instructions, how they actually change the program counter where they are stored, what are the internal dynamics of it and basically there are two types of conditional statement branch and unconditional branch and conditional branch and then we will look at the basic heart or basically what actually uh, determines this condition. In high level language we say x is greater than y or the, fun of the uh, means loop continues from 0 to 10 at every point we increment the counter by 1, but when the counter reaches 10 then we exit in hardware how actually it is reflected. So, it is reflected in terms of certain flag bits which are there is some registers called the flag registers and inside the flag register there are certain bits allocated for some important parameters like sign, 0, carry, parity, overflow, equality etcetera. So, what they are basically when some condition some instructions are executed like say add 
and then certain flags will be set in the flag register depending on the value of the operation. Say for example, if I subtract two numbers and the answer is 0. So, in that case the flag bit corresponding to 0 will be set. If I add two numbers and the sum is say 5. So, in this case the 0th flag bit will be say reset because the answer is more than 1. Then there is something called even parity. So, if the answer is 5101 is an odd parity number. So, this even parity bit will be reset and so forth. That means, in other words in this unit we are also going to look at certain flag bits and how they are set and how they are reset depending on the arithmetic operation just before just after going for this instructions corresponding to addition subtraction equality checking etcetera. And then we will see how the jump conditional jump instructions basically execute by looking at the value of this bits in the flag register. So, what are the objective of the unit? This is a small unit and the objectives are basically to discuss that after this object code after this unit as a comprehension you will be able to discuss flag bits and how these flag bits are set and reset. The flag bits are heart of any kind of a conditional instruction and you will be able to discuss in as a comprehension that what are the bits, how are these bits set and how are the bits reset. And then you will be able to design this is a synthesis objective using this flag bits you will be able to design conditional statements that is uh, based on the because no condition instructions can be executed without the flag bits. So, using this flag bits so what are the conditional instructions can be designed like for example, if you have a 0th flag then it, you can have instructions corresponding to equality checking that if two numbers are compared uh, or, uh, or if I subtract two numbers and then if the answer is 0 then the 0th flag will be set then I can have a instruction called I can have a subtraction instruction just before it and then I can say jump on 0. That means, say for example, I have a counter and I am I actually want to increment the counter till 10 then just after executing of the each loop I will decrement or I will increment the value of the index by 1 and as, and as I check as a check I will subtract the index up with 10. So, whenever the answer is 0 that means, the loop has reached up to 10 and you should exit. So, in that case I will use the jump conditional jump on z, but just before that I will subtract the index vari variable with 10 and if it is 0 the 0 s flag will be set and I can have a special instruction called jump on 0. So, this is actually a synthesis objective just by looking at the flag bits you can decide what are the instructions can be designed for this conditional loops. So, before we start off this one. So, we know that whenever we talk of a jump instruction then what basically happens you, you are executing certain set of code or you are in a certain temporal part of a code and as a jump instruction you generally you can go and serve a procedure or a function. So, before we jump from the main program to some other function or from one location to some other location the current context of the code has to be saved. So, therefore, that is certain what are the temporary memory location, what are different register values at this time, what was the accumulator value at this time. Say for example, you have loaded some variable, you have added with something and stored the value in the accumulator and just after that before saving it to the main memory you got a procedure call and you jump. So, whenever I come back and re-execute from this one, so what basically happens? The program counter say is at memory location 5 in which case what I have done I have added something with accumulator and stored the value in accumulator. Now, the sixth location was storing the accumulator to the main memory, but the sixth memory location what happened just before that up sorry the fifth location may be a uh, this accumulator operation then there is a function which may be a conditional operation that depending on something you execute the next instruction or jump to a function and the next instruction may be to store the value of the accumulator to the memory. Just, but just before that there was a conditional instruction based on something something you jump. So, just after the accumulator operation at memory location fifth you add the add something and store to the accumulator, but next was a conditional instruction. So, without saving it to the memory you have executed a procedure call, but then what happens the accumulator will also be used in the procedure call. So, the intermediate value of the sum which in accumulator will be lost. So, what you have to do before you go to the executing the function you have to store the value of the accumulator, you have to remember the value of program counter that now I am in 5, 6 was the in, I mean conditional instruction and after I come back I have to start executing from uh, means memory location number 7 the instruction that will save the accumulator value to the main memory. So, you have to also remember that what position that is if I jump from this location to this location. So, I am fifth is an accumulator operation, 
sixth is your conditional jump, seventh is again you are storing back the value of accumulator whatever you have done over here in the main memory. So, after doing this function you have to again come back and execute for memory location 7. So, when I am jumping you have to remember that I have to come back to memory location number 7 whatever you mean intermediate accumulator value has to be stored in the memory register memory and so many temporary variable or context of the program has to be saved. So, that when I come after executing the function I can recollect everything back and reload the registers accordingly. So, there is something called a program status word which is a part of the memory or registers which contain the information about the present state of the program. By storing the current PSW during interruption or procedure call then everything is saved and when you come back after re-executing your function you can uh, get back the whole code and all the intermediate values refill and start executing from where you have left. So, what are the why you are so PSW uh, PSW is so important when you are studying about jump instructions because jump is you may leave the context of the current code and execute some other context and again come back and re execute from where I have left. So, the whole intermediate state of your program is saved as a PSW and we recollect that. So, what the PSW has it has lot of components some of them I have listed error status of code pointer to the next instruction to be executed like in this case it is 7 where I have left sign bits, 0 bits, carry bits, reset bits, overflow bits and so many other things which is listed over here. So, in fact, so when we will be slowly, slowly advancing in different uh, other uh, newer modules on interrupts uh, then uh, actually on memory operations then we will be looking at more in details about what exactly the PSW stores, but for at the time being you can see what they are error status, pointer, PC next value, all the flag bits current value of accumulator if there are some temper if there, there are some registers r1 r2 r3 which are the user defined registers all those variables you will store it as a program status word. So, when I come back I can recollect everything and I can reuse. So, that is one very important thing that just before executing a jump to a function or an interrupt service routine we store the program status word. Now, that is about the background that before I uh, I am doing some work now I just go and do something else. So, before that actually I save my work in some intermediate memory and when I come back I can do that. Now, we are going to the real clux of this uh, uh, conditional instructions that is flags. So, this was about bookkeeping. So, once uh, the more details about bookkeeping etcetera will be doing when you are doing the module on interrupts that is on I O. Then, uh, because in whenever there is an interrupt you have to leave the main code and you have to go and service the interrupt. So, you have to store the context of the main 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 code. Okay. So, leaving aside that that is just a pointer which you have to keep in mind for the time being. Then we are going to something called the heart of uh, this jump instruction that is the code or flags. The code or flag is a register basically this is something called a flag register. It has individual bits which are set and reset by some execution of a arithmetic operation or a logic operation just before the setting of it. In other words there is a register which is a flag register. So, whenever some arithmetic operation or logic operation happens the corresponding bits are set or reset. For example, if a subtraction instruction leads to 0 then the 0th flag is set. That means, there are a lot of flags like 0th flag, parity flag, sign flag, overflow flag etcetera. So, based on some arithmetic operation of a subtraction addition the corresponding bits are set and reset and for many cases basically some of the flag bits are set or reset, but they are not taken into picture. For example, if I am doing a subtraction operation A minus B. So, obviously, there will be no carry generated because unless I add two negative numbers or add two positive numbers the carry will not be generated that is there will be no overflow. A carry can be generated as we will see in two's complement arithmetic, but a overflow is not generated. So, even if the overflow flag is set or reset if I am just adding two uh, one if I am doing a subtraction operation that is I subtract a negative number from a positive number or one number is positive and one number is add negative we are adding it that is two sign numbers are there, but of an opposite sign and we are adding it then the overflow flag is immaterial. The flag will be set or reset based on different conditions as we will see, but it will be a do not care condition. But a very concrete example is given over here if I subtract two numbers and the answer is 0 then the 0 flag is set and then you can use it for an instruction like jump if 0 this is jump on 0. So, if there is an instruction so if I have a operation like say sub 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 sum say uh, 30. So, uh, what it is doing it is taking the value of memory location 30 whatever is in the memory is assuming it to be a direct instruction. So, uh, 
it will go to the memory location 30, find out what is the value in memory location 30, subtract with the accumulator and store back. If so, if the content of memory location 30 is equal to the accumulator, you will get a 0 over there and immediately 0 flag will be set. Now, in the next instruction, you can have a conditional instruction, you can say that jump if 0. So, that means, if uh, the may say the memory location have the value of 10, 30, memory location 30 has the value 10 and accumulator is an index of a counter which has also got 10, you subtract it, then the loop has been completed and you have to jump out of the loop. So, you can say have a instruction called jump on 0, just after the subtraction instruction. So, it will jump and go out to some other memory location because the instruction has been satisfied, condition instruction is satisfied because the 0th flag is set. So, now we are going to see different type of what are the different type of uh, typical in a typical CPU, what are the different types of flags. First is the signed flag. So, this is flag is of importance if the arithmetic is signed. That means, if, if I am using unsigned arithmetic for the time being, so this flag is of no importance. If the operation that is if I am using a two's complement arithmetic, so if I know the MSB is 1, it is a negative number and if the MSB is a 0, it is a positive number. So, uh, the sign this is of importance if the arithmetic is signed. So, if the answer is 0 that is positive, if the MSB is 0, so it is set that is a positive number and if the MSB is a 1, then it is a negative number and it is reset 0. So, if you do some operation and the answer is 0, so it is set and it is if it is the answer is not equal to 0, it is a reset. So, of course, for any operation everything 0th flag is very very important unlike if it is a unsigned arithmetic then the sign has no meaning. Carry flag, if two numbers if the addition of two numbers result in a carry out of the most significant is obvious. If I am having two numbers say example 0 1 1 1 and if I have a uh, number 1 0 0 0 unsigned arithmetic I am considering sorry if I take 1 1 sorry. If I 7 and this is 12 if I add 7 with 12 you are going to get 1 1 0 0 and then the carry generated. So, in, in case of unsigned arithmetic such a carry is gener generated the most significant piece. So, the carry flag is so, if I am taking two, if I subtract two numbers and there is some carry, carry is borrowed, then also a sign carry flag will be set and in all other cases it is reset. So, in very simple words uh, as I have given you an example, if some carry is generated by adding two numbers at the MSB or if the subtraction of two numbers required a borrow at this, then a carry flag is set. Similarly, even parity the results are generated. So, if the number of ones is even the parity is set in other cases it is reset. Like in this case the carry is 1, but the 4 bit answer is 0 0 1 1. So, it is a number of 1s are 2. So, it is a even. So, even parity is set. Several others overflow flag. So, as I tell you what is an overflow? Overflow will happen if the two numbers are positive or the two numbers are negative because a negative and a positive number will never generate a carry. So, if the two positive numbers with sign 0 are added and it yields a negative number. We will see the why, what, what is the reason. So, if there are it is a signed arithmetic for example, assume and there are two numbers and you add them and then there is an overflow because we all know in digital design what is the concept of an overflow, but we will also look in details with some examples in this. For example, so uh, oh, like as I have told you let us take an unsigned number already we have taken the example. So, let us take 1 1 1. So, definitely if I if I there will be a carry over there and in fact, in fact if I say it, it cannot be accommodated the in the 4 bits. So, if I assume that the result has to be given in 4 bits and I have two numbers like 1 0 0 0 and all triple ones. So, of course, there will be overflow will be generated and and also, also we will see the idea. So, if the negative number positive number whatever happens. So, in other words in a digital arithmetic if a overflow is generated based on the number of bits you store for the answer and number of bits you store for the operands. Uh, uh, if it is a overflow is there, it, it bit will be uh, it will be set, other case will be reset. Like for example, if you add 0000, 0, 0, 0 with triple 0 with so 0, 0, 0, 0004. So, the answer is 1000 0, 0, 0, unsigned arithmetic of force no overflow is generated, the overflow flag is reset in this case. Very simple. Equality as I told you, if if you if you it will this is restricted to a compare, compare instruction. So, if there is the instruction called compare and then if the two numbers are equal then this flag is set. So, it is a comp instruction and you give two operands and if they are equal the answer the, that bit is set in the flag register otherwise it is a reset. Interrupt enable. So, will there is also a flag in which case you allow a interrupt to be occurred or not. That means, a main code is running whether we will allow some other code to interrupt that. 
if you allow it, so it will be its flag will be 1 and if you are not allowing such an interrupt to interrupt your code, then the that flag will be set to 0. So, at this point of time I am not going to elaborate more on interrupt enable flag because it is a full unit and module which is dedicated to I O and interrupts. And simply like supervisor mode also, some of the some some of the codes may like execute in the supervisor mode. So, in all those cases, you have to set that flag. And if you are not allowing any code to run in a supervisor mode or user privileged or super user privileged mode, you can reset this bit. So, these two will be discussed later whenever you are going to some advanced modules, mainly we will be talking in a further down the line on the IO module about interrupts. Supervisor mode is something also related to operating system and executing in a code in a super user mode etcetera. But in details we will be looking at interrupt flags whenever we will be discussing the chapter on this end. Now, based on this some of the very important flags for us is the sign flag, zero flag, carry flag, parity flag, overflow flag and equality flag. So, these are some of the most typically important flags which will be used in everyday life of designing sign uh, control instructions. So, now we will be looking at some of the typical control instructions based on the flags. The first most simple one is the unconditional instruction, unconditional jump. That is, you are at this memory location, the PC is say 5, this is the fifth memory location where the code is using, then you can say jump 50. So, without looking at anything, the program counter is going to become 50, whatever instruction is present in the memory location 50 will be executed. That is a very simple unconditional jump instruction, no flags are required for that. An example. So, move accumulator 0. So, in this case move immediate. So, they have already mentioned about the accumulator. Uh, this depends on the mnemonics or the instruction type of this machine. So, they say that move immediate accumulator 0. So, move the value of 0 to accumulator. Sometimes as I told you many times you can also drop this. We say that move immediate 0. It means the default destination instruct destination operator is the accumulator. So, move i 0 means the value of 0 will be loaded to the accumulator. Then move r 2 0 0. So, initialize this is also move immediate r 2 0 0. So, in fact, it is better to write this one 0 0 because of the size. So, it is saying that move immediate uh, r 2 0 that is you are resetting register r 2 as well as you are resetting accumulator to 0 0. In this case, I am assuming the accumulator is a 8 bit accumulator. So, these two are just the initializing accumulator to 0, initializing user register to 0. So, in this uh, in this instruction in this machine they are explicitly sorry. So, in this case they are explicitly keeping the value of accumulator in the instruction itself mentioning let us keep it keep that way. And then another very very important thing in when we are doing conditional instructions is the label. So, that means we can attach some labels to the instruction. So, these are not actually uh, the it will be written in the memory when the code will be executed, but actually it is a label. So, label means it is saying as a name to the instruction. For example, the label 1 it is saying that add 1 r 2 r 1 that means whatever is the content of r 2 it will be added with 1 and the value will be related to the r 2 that means r 2 is equal to r 2 plus 1 that is nothing but increment r 2. So, the label 1 colon this one it means that add i r 2 1 is as the label add. Then what I am doing? You are adding accumulator to r 2. So, whatever is in the value of r 2 is stored back to the accumulator. So, now r 2 is dumped into accumulator add this, uh, sorry add the value of accumulator to r 2. So, whatever is in the accumulator will be added to r 2 and stored back to the accumulator. So, the accumulator is equal to accumulator plus r 2. Then jump to level 1 unconditionally again you jump back. So, what do I mean by jump? at level 1 means I want to jump and execute this instruction. That is from jump level 1 means jump to add uh, jump to add immediate this instruction. You want to jump to this instruction. So, then how can I tell that jump unconditional to this instruction? So, some name has to be given. So, label is nothing, but the, the name which is given to this instruction. So, this label 1 is a name which is given to this instruction. That is just after a adding r 2 to accumulator and storing back the value in accumulator again I want to jump back to this one. That means, you are going to execute these two instructions in a indefinite loop. There is no condition you execute this then you execute this that means, r 2 equal to r 2 plus 1 that is you are incrementing r 2 and then again you are going to add the value of r 2 to accumulator and save it to the accumulator. That means, you are doing 1 plus 2 plus that is you are doing 1 plus 1 plus 1 and you are actually keeping on doing it. 
and it is an infinite loop. If you see what is happening, it is an infinite loop. So, add immediate R2 to 1, that means R2 is initially reset to 0. So, every time you are in incrementing 1, 2, 3, 4, and you are adding the same value to the accumulator. So, you are adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 and dot dot dot. But as this is an unconditional jump, label is the name of this instruction. So, you are jumping over there. So, you are actually having an infinite loop, there is no exit from this loop. So, this just shows two very important things forget about this, uh, this infinite loop business. The idea is that jump unconditional means without checking anything you jump over here and we are doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 so on and basically as I want to say jump from this to some instruction. So, some label is there. So, label is the name of the instruction where you want to jump. So, in this case I have given the name of this instruction. So, whenever I will load the code, in that case I will replace the value of name of the label with the memory location. Say for example, I load this at memory location 1, I load this at memory location 2, then basically uh, this instruction is say memory location 3, because label and this is in the same row. So, label equation number, label number 4, this is instruction number 5 sorry memory location number 5. So, it will say jump to label 1. So, that means jump to which memory location label 1. So, label 1 is nothing but memory location 3 where the instruction add r 2 plus r 1 is there. So, when the code will be assembled and linked and loaded you will replace it with the value of memory location 3. That means, after at 5 at memory location number 5th you unconditionally jump to memory location number 3 and you keep on doing it 3 4 5 3 4 5 3 4 5 it will be continuously executing. But that is all these labels etcetera are replaced with the memory location values when the code is parsed because when the code is assembled. So, the, these are all taught in details in a code called assembler linker loader that is the system programming. But for us it is enough to understand right now that from jump to label 1 means you are jumping from this one to the name to this instruction whose name is label 1 and in this in fact this is a uh, the loop instruction basically because there is no condition attached to it is an infinite loop. Right now, so now, now we are, as you have told that actually jump unconditionally is used many times, but the main heart of this instructions on control instructions are basically on conditional instructions. Like some of the examples it is given jump any or jump on 0 that jump if not equal to 0, jump any jump not equal to 0 or jump not 0 like j e q jump if equal to jump on z j n c j n j l o jump if no carry or jump if carry. So, you can go through it several type of instructions are there j jump l jump if less j, uh, j g e jump if greater than or equal j n jump if negative. So, based on the flag like it is saying that jump any or jump not z. In, in fact, uh, this time we are checking the jump not 0 means you are checking the 0 flag. Jump any, jump not equal to means you are checking the equality flag. Jump negative, you are checking the negativity flag that is the sign flag. So, if the sign flag is set that means it is a negative number. Jump uh, if less, so you can check the equality flag. So, all those different flags will be present based on the flag values or the flag registers available you can correspondingly decide or design your instruction set on the jumps like we are now going back to the same example of uh, the same thing that there is a loop we are resetting the value of accumulator we are resetting the value of R 2 that is we are adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 like that. But in the previous step we were actually jumping it unconditionally back to the initial one set reset accumulator and register 2 then every time he was making r 2 1 1 incrementing r 2 then every time you are adding the value of r 2 to accumulator and repeating it. That means, we are not we are not exiting out of the loop based on some condition. Here we are actually using our loop same example we are going to take, but here we are going to come out based on certain conditions. Like if you look label 1 is the name of this instruction then add r 2 to accumulator add r 2 r 1 that is increment the value of r 2 same thing as above add the value of r 2 to the accumulator that is add, add accumulator to r 2 here the conditional step comes in that is CMPI that is compare the value of r 2 to n that means you are incrementing the value of r 2 say I want to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to 10. So, this n is in this case going to be 10. So, after doing the add r 2 to uh, r 2 to accumulator and saving back the value in accumulator you are going to check whether r 2 has reached the value of 10 or not here it is 10. So, there is a comp CMPI instruction and whenever r 2 will be equal to 10 that corresponding equality flag will be checked to be made set and then you can say jump not equal that means, if the equality flag is not set jump not equal then again you jump back to label and whenever this will be equal that r 2 and n will be equal because n is equal to 10. So, n 
R2 will have the value of 10, then jump not equal to level 1 will become false because now they will be equal because jump not equal, J not equal. It is true if and only if the equality flag is reset because not equal. Whenever the equality flag is true, jump not equal to will become false because the equality flag will be set. So, there is something called equality flag. So, if the equality flag is equal to 1, sorry equality flag is 0 that means the two stuffs are not equal, two operands are not equal, then jump not equal will be true. But whenever two numbers will be equal, then what is going to happen? The equality flag will be set and then jump not equal to will become false. Whenever jump not equal to will be false, it will not jump to label, but will go and execute the next instruction. So, it will come out of the loop. So, it gives a very nice example that how the other infinite loop of adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 has been modified to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. So, it gives a very nice idea that uh, just before a comparison instruction, we do a corresponding comparison, uh, sorry we do a comparison instruction, set the corresponding flags and just by looking at the flag, we decide either to go to the top of the loop and re execute the loop or we come out of this one. So, that is actually the very concrete example of using a control instruction. Now, because uh, whenever we will be looking at more uh, different complicated codes in the next module, we will be always using so many times these uh, control instructions. But in this unit, we let us look at the more interesting part of it that is how the flags are set or which flags are set. If we can find out which flags are set or reset, then after that it is very simple to think about the control instructions. Because they have just two options, true or false, if it is true, generally it will go to the next to the desired position of the label which is uh, which is which the condition instruction is pointing to the level it will go to that level if the condition is true else we will just execute the next instruction after the jump instruction extremely simple about it. So, now we are seeing with different examples how different flags are set which flags are set and which flags are reset that is more interesting. So, for example, they are doing 7 and minus 7. So, as both plus and minus are involved. So, it is a signed arithmetic 7 is represented as 0 1 1 is 2's complement minus 7 is nothing but in 2's complement it is 0 1 1 and again you have to add a 1. So, it is sorry. So, this is actually 2's complement of minus 7 because a 1's complement of minus 7 is nothing but 1 0 0 0 you add a 1 you get this. So, this is actually the 2's complement of 7 that is minus 7. So, minus 7 and plus 7 are represented over here just a recall from the digital design. So, if the LSB is 0 it is a positive number. So, this is a positive number and this is a negative number. Now, let us add it. So, it is a, it's a signed arithmetic. So, if you add it, you are going to get 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry will be 1. So, 1 plus 1 again 0, the carry will be 1. So, 1 plus 1 is 0 and again 1 and this is generated. So, this is basically your answer and this is your some extra bit has been generated. So, 7 minus 7 is equal to 0. So, answer is 0 which is correct. Now, you see what are the flags are set and reset. In fact, all flags are either set or reset, but some will be used and some will be discarded based on the context. So, for example, 0 flag is set. The 4 bit answer is 0, 0, 0, 0. So, it holds. So, this in this case z equal to 0. So, the 0th flag is set. It may be noted that we have considered 2's arithmetic. So, we ignore the carry. This is very important. In 2's complement arithmetic, we generally ignore the carry. And, but anyway, for calculating the 0th flag, which is not at all going into look at the carry business, for the 0th flag checking this is only of matter of importance that is the answer 4 bits. Whether a carry is generated, it is not generated, whether you want to reject the carry because of 2's complement arithmetic, it has nothing to do. It has got the 4 zeros as the answer, so the 0th flag is set. NU checks all the 4 bits uh, if the answer is 0 as this holds, in this case the 0th flag is 1. Then the MSB of the final answer after negating the carry because, so in this case 0 flag is equal to 1 that is the first thing because it has nothing to do with any other stuff, it just checks the 4 bits as the answer all 0, 0 is flag is set. Now, the MSB is 0 because as I told you in 2's complement arithmetic we can neglect the carry 0. So, indicating that is a positive answer. So, the uh, so the answer is positive. So, if there is a positive flag, the answer will be 1. In this case, n is a, is a negative flag n. So, the negative flag is 0 because the answer is a positive flag indicate it is a positive. So, negative flag is 0. So, if there is a negative flag called n, so it will be reset because the answer is a positive answer. So, had it been, so we will see if the answer is a negative answer, then what will be the value of the negative flag, n flag. In this case, as carry is generated. So, if you see, so 0th flag is 1, 
negative flag is 0, negative flag is reset because this m s b is equal to 0, 0 at into complement arithmetic at the m s b denotes a positive number. Now, look at the carry. So, a carry is generated. So, as a carry is generated, the c flag or the carry flag is set to be 1. But again, as the arithmetic is signed, the value of carry is ignored. So, that is again very important. So, in a two complement arithmetic, what happens? We have done this, and if you look at the de facto standard in digital design, in two complement arithmetic, we are not actually bothering about the carry which is generated. That is a do not care condition. But in a hardware, when the flags are set or reset, it does not look at all those contexts. The 0 at the 0 at flag will just check what are the answer of the 4, four bits. As it is 0, the 0 at flag is set. This bit is 0, that means the positive number. So, the positive flag will be set or the negative flag is reset. A carry has been generated. So, in this case, the carry flag is set. But as the arithmetic or the instructions we have executed, we know that the two complement numbers I have given as input. So, I will not use the carry flag. So, in other words, the flag setting logic is totally blind. It is taking two numbers 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 1 and generating the answer as 1 as a carry and 4 zeros as the answer. And accordingly, the flag bits of 0 is set, the flag bit of negative number is reset and a carry uh, flag is set. But as I know as a programmer that I have given the two numbers which are input as two complement arithmetic and in this case the carry is not calculated or ignored. So, I have to myself ignore the carry flag. Even if it is set, I should not use it as a, if I use the value of carry bit immediately after this instruction to do some conditional check and jump, there may be a logical error in my code. So, as a programmer, I have to know that I have to ignore the carry flag for this instruction. Since the both the numbers of so anyway, uh, several other flags we can think. Since both the numbers are of different sign, the output flag is zero. Anyway, we'll see that as the number of ones in the answer is zero, so even parity flag is set to one and so forth. So anyway, all these uh, flag bits can be easily understood. Okay, so again I'll come to that. So interest important are basically these three: that the zero flag is set, the negative flag is reset, a carry flag is set, but it has to be ignored. Similarly, the 4 bits the answer is 0. So, the 0 th flag will be set and if the sorry I mean the of uh, the 4 4 there are 4 zeros. So, the number of parity is even. So, the even parity will be set the both the and the numbers are of different signs some sign flag will be set to 0 and so forth. So, forth. so lot of flags will be there and based on the values the flags will be set or reset, but which flag has to be ignored has to be decided by us. Again I will take another example. So, to make the things more easier. Like for example, I have taken 2 and I have taken minus 3 that is 2 minus 3 I am going to do. So, this is a 2's complement implementation of minus 2 and 3. If I do the answer, I am going to get this as the answer. So, it is basically the answer should be equal to nothing but minus 1. So, in this case what happens? The 4 1's are there. So, the it is checking that the last bit is 1. So, the 0 th flag. So, anyway let us first let us start with 0 th flag. So, the all the answers are 1. So, in fact, obviously, the answer is not 0. So, the 0 th flag is set to 0 that is obvious. The m s b is 1. So, it is a negative number. So, the negative flag is set to 1. Obviously, it is a negative number because this is the uh, so 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So, negative flag is set. There is no carry will be generated. So, the carry flag is reset to 0. But again, as a programmer, you have to always do not consider the carry flag as of now, because even if the carry flag is reset, because there is no carry generated, but in two's complement arithmetic carry flags are not used. So, that you have to overlook. Since both the numbers of different signs, the overflow flag is 0. So, why what I was telling about this overflow flag now and this means the idea is that if the two numbers one is positive and one is negative, a overflow can never happen. So, basically in such cases always the overflow flag is reset. So, whenever I, uh, I means whenever I will take some new examples now, when both the numbers will be positive or both the numbers will be negative, the overflow flag will be talked about. So, in both the cases, the overflow flag is set to 0, the 4 answers are 4 ones. So, if the 4 answers are 1, then what is the case? It is an even parity. So, the even parity flag is set to 1. Now, as I was telling you that all the flags we have considered, but every time the output or the oh, sorry the overflow flag O is the overflow flag, the overflow flag we are actually not considering right now because one number is positive and one number is negative. If both the numbers of different size, the overflow flag is neglected. Now, we are taking two numbers as 8 and we are using an unsigned arithmetic. 
So now all the other flags importance will start coming up because two numbers are stating and if you are adding you may get a overflow, you may get a carry because you are going an unsigned arithmetic in unsigned arithmetic carry etc are of importance. So, I add two numbers 8 plus 8. So, you are going to get the answer as 1 0 0 0 0 that is 16. But now you see these are the 4 bit which are of importance this 1 bit carry or overflow has been generated. So, now this sorry. So, as a hardware it will just check the answers are 4 0. So, that is true that the 0 flag is set. The MSB is 0. So, it is not going to check the carry 1. So, the answer is 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0. So, the answer is 0 0 0 0 the carry is generated as 1. So, this is checked the MSB is 0 it is not going to look at the overflow. So, the negative flag is reset again uh, in this case also you can uh, ignore the uh, negative or positive flag here because in this case it is an unsigned arithmetic. Previous version where you are using a signed arithmetic in 2's complement this was very very important the negative flag was very important in that case the 0th MSB means a positive number and 1 in the MSB as a negative number. So, in last context you had to take into mind that I have to consider this flag. So, if I take 1 0 0 and 1 0 0 of oh sorry 1 0 0 0 and 1 0 0 in a 2's complement right many these are 2 negative numbers basically. So, if you are you as a, a programmer you know that I have given the 2 numbers as input which are in 2's complement in that case you have to very deliberately keep in mind about the sign flag, but as the present example we are taking a unsigned arithmetic. So, you have to neglect the negative flag uh, carry has been generated definitely. So, the carry flag is set to 1 again previous case we have to neglect the carry flag back because we are using uh, two's complement arithmetic and one number was negative and one number is positive. So, we are neglecting the carry flag, but here as we are using an unsigned arithmetic a carry has been generated and in such unsigned arithmetic the carry flag is set to 1 a carry has been generated and you have to consider this. Similarly, uh, the number of last if you see the number of ones in the answer is 0 the parity flag is set to 1. But again since both the numbers are negative, but the sign is 0 which indicates the answer is positive. So, overflow flag is 1. So, in this case you see why, why is an overflow uh, uh, for example, if both the numbers are negative. So, if you consider a so again this one is very important if you are considering uh, uh, sign arithmetic. So, if you are taking a sign arithmetic then 1 and 1 they are 2 negative numbers. Since, both the numbers are negative sign bit is 1 if you are considering a sign 2's complement arithmetic, but the sign bit of the answer is 0 that is this is a 0. So, had this been the 2 negative numbers. So, what are 1 0 0 and 1 0 0. So, if you are taking a 2's complement arithmetic it will be 0 0 uh, it will be 0 sorry uh, this is actually nothing but 0 1 1 1 you add a 1 nothing but minus 8. So, this is nothing but equal to minus 8 and minus 8. So, if you are taking it is a sign arithmetic format this is minus 8 basically. So, in that case you are adding minus 8 and minus 8. So, in this case your answer should be minus 16, but somehow you are getting the MSB as 0. So, in this case there is a this since the both the numbers are negative, but the answer is 0 which indicates that the answer is positive. So, the overflow flag is 0. So, the over flag overflow or overflow flag is set to 0 that means, uh, the over sorry the overflow flag is set to 1 because had this is a signed arithmetic. So, this is minus 8 minus 8 the answer should have been minus 16, but somehow the answer is showing MSB as 0 which is basically wrong due to an overflow. So, the overflow flag is set to 1, but in this context as we are using a unsigned arithmetic you have to totally neglect the overflow flag. So, in this case we are going to neglect the overflow flag, but we are going to take the carry flag because the both they are both unsigned numbers a a one has been generated which is nothing but your carry flag, but this is not a mistake there is no overflow because we are considering only unsigned positive number. So, in this case this is plus 8 and not minus 8 in the 2's complement format. So, in other words it is very very important to decide what is the context and what flags I have to take and what flags I do not have to take. Like when I am adding 2 numbers which are positive immediately I have to think that I will take the 0 th uh, I will take the 0 th flag, I can take the negative flag, I can take the parity flag, I can take the carry flag, but as there are 2 sign arithmetics and I am add adding it. So, the overflow flags can be neglected for the timing like just like this here 
it's a unsigned arithmetic two numbers you are generating so the carry flag will be neglected over here because you know unsigned arithmetic binary one is negative one is positive or in two's complement subtraction when you are doing we always neglect the carry two's complement positive or negativity whatever when you are doing arithmetic in two's complement we neglect the carry so since both the numbers are of defined uh, uh, the different symbols like one is positive and one is negative the overflow can never be generated so the overflow flag will always be zero in this case but we are not neglecting that is very very important over here again uh, some more very simple examples like 5 plus 4 if you are going to do again this is an unsigned arithmetic so you add this you are going to get the answer as this obviously the zero flag is reset because the answer is not zero the msb is one indicating is a negative number but again it's an unsigned arithmetic so you have to neglect the negative flag there is no carry generated over here so the carry flag is reset we have to consider this because 4 plus 5 is 9 you are doing the operation in a 4 bit arithmetic so obviously no carry will be generated two numbers you are taking plus 4 and minus 4 the msb is a one which is a negative number so in fact a uh, overflow flag will be set because two negative numbers you are take so two positive numbers you are taking the answer should always be positive but the answer is showing an msb but again as i told you it's an unsigned arithmetic overflow flag will be set to one but it's an unsigned arithmetic so it is ignored the number of ones are two over here even parity even parity flag is set and you have to consider this flag similarly Again, if I uh, take some other example, 7 plus 1 is equal to 8, same thing, this is going to be the answer, answer is not all 0, 0th flag is reset, we have to take it, negative flag, MSB, the final answer is negative, so negative flag is set to 1, again, okay, just a minute, so let us assume that this is slightly uh, uh, different in this case, so in this case, I take 7 plus 1, but in this case, I assume a two's complement arithmetic like in this case this was just to just to keep your variation so in this case uh, this unsigned arithmetic i could have also taken this in unsigned arithmetic version but in this case i am using two positive numbers but still i am using a signed arithmetic version so just i am trying to see what is the difference so in this case so i am adding 7 plus 1 so it is 8 so this is the case so in this case i am using a two's arithmetic two's complement arithmetic two numbers are positive but still i am using a signed arithmetic just to give the example so, MSB is 1, so indicating the number is negative, so the negative flag is set to 1. So, there is no carry generated, so the carry flag is set to 0. Since both the numbers are positive, that is sign bits are 0, but the sign of the answer is 1, which is a reverse, so the overflow flag is set to 1. As 1 is answer, this is as O is 1, the answer is not valid, and so is flag N. Now, we are going to see in details only 1, 1 in this answer. So, in this case, it is odd parity. So, the odd parity flag is set to 0. Again, in this case, all flags are valid. Again, let us relook what we are doing and what is the difference. So, in this case, plus 5 and plus 4, they are two positive numbers. We are using an unsigned arithmetic format. So, I have told you what it means. In this case, I am taking two positive numbers like 7 and 1. But in fact, I am using a signed arithmetic version. That is, uh, that, uh, two's complement arithmetic where the range is from minus 8 in this 4 bit number minus 8 to plus 7. This is the range you all know from digital design fundamentals. But in this case there are 4 bit numbers and this is unsigned arithmetic. So, you can go from 0 to 50 that is the range difference. So, in this case I am talking on a 2's complement range that is minus 7 to plus 7. So, if I do the addition you are going to get this as the answer. So, as if you look at it it is an invalid answer because 7 plus 8 is going to be positive 8. But positive 8 cannot be represented in 4 bits in 2's complement arithmetic. This is a very well known thing. I think if, if you have forgot, you can just go and revise your digital design fundamentals. Because positive 8 will be 0, 1, 0, 0. This is actually positive 8. Because 1, 0, 0, 0 is negative 8 in 2's complement arithmetic. So, this in fact, that is why I told you that it is going out of range. So, this is going to be an incorrect answer. So, if you do this, you are going to get the answer this one 1, 0, 0, 0. As a hardware, it does not understand much. It will just develop the value of flags based on certain hardware computation. So, 0, 0 flag is reset, it is taken. MSB is 1, directly indicating that it is a negative number. So, negative flag is set as a negative number. In fact, as I told you, the answer should be positive, positive 8, but you are not going to get the answer positive 8 in a 4 bit answer. So, therefore, you require a larger space or a 5 bit space to implement. If, if you could have done in this way, then your answer would have been correct. 
you would have got this as the answer which is going to give you the correct answer in signed arithmetic. But as you are using a 4 bit number to do this, so in fact that is why you are going to get an overflow and all the problems have started. So, MSB is 1 1 the negative flag is white, there is no carry generated those carry flag is less but here the overflow flag is actually a main role player here. So, it is finding both the answers both the inputs are 0 0 that is they are positive numbers, but the answer is a negative number. So, immediately it is going to say that the overflow flag is 1. So, now we have to check that when the overflow flag is 1 and the answer is negative. So, both of them are saying that the answer is not valid and so is the negative flag. So, immediately whenever a overflow is generated that means you have to understand that overflow is different from carry. Carry means some carry has been generated and but the answer is valid. But in, in this case what happens? So, with the carry the whole answer is valid, but in this case when there is a overflow generated means there is no carry generated, but the answer is actually a wrong answer because of the overflow. So, I could have easily connected by putting it as a 1 bit additional I mean I could have if I would have done as a 5 bit the answer would have been correct. So, whenever the overflow flag is set, so immediately it will say that the answer is invalid as well as the negative flag is also invalid, the sign is also invalid and the answer is also invalid. But that is why if I just compare again with uh, this one, you could have checked the uh, see both the numbers are of different size, this is of different size now this is of different size, then immediately the uh, overall flag is reset. That means, if the two numbers of different that is one number is positive, one number is negative in a sign arithmetic, you can never generate an overflow. Because the, if two numbers are subtracted, the answer is always less. So, if you can represent one negative number sorry one positive and one negative number in 4 bits, then the answer will always can be represented in 4 bits, because you are making the number less due to subtraction. But if there are two numbers of same sign positive number or negative number, then the number can become larger than the two operand itself and it requires to take more number of bits that is what actually has happened. 7 plus 1 is 8 which is plus 8 in sign arithmetic is nothing but is 0 1 0 0 0. 5 bits, it cannot be accommodated in 4 bits. So, a overflow has been generated which actually neglects the that you have it will not do anything, but just after the operation some flags are set and reset. So, whenever you find out this overflow flag is set, so you have to know that the answer is wrong and therefore, in fact you have to give more precision to this and so forth. So, that is what is the idea of setting the flag. So, this is a very very complicated situation and maybe later we will see how to use this overflow flag to set a how can you generate uh, instruction based on the overflow flag to see whether the answer is valid or not. So, for example, if you have a 32 bit machine and you are taking all largest possible number you have fitted up into the memory and you are doing the uh, uh, computation. So, every time you have to check whether there is a overflow or not. So, if you are getting an overflow bit set by default you have to declare that this is an invalid answer uh, or the precision is an error. So, all these things you have to report. So, these complicated things maybe we will try to see whenever we will be learn, going, going more into assembly language coding and micro microprogramming etcetera. So, in fact, what we have done in this class, in this class basically we have seen in the crux of what is the uh, conditional instructions and more importantly how basically flags are set and reset that is the most difficult part of it. Once you understand how a flag is set and reset and then accordingly you can easily generate the instruction based on that and based on the truth of and false you go to the label or you just execute the instructions next to it. So, uh, some typical questions basically which can be asked and let us see how it fits your objective like for example, the first question is what is the program status word and what it contains. Then the second question said what are flag bits, what are different types of flag bits like set, reset, auxiliary set, overflow etcetera, indicate the use of these flag registers and with examples how can you do it and basically uh, what instructions can be done, what purpose it can solve. So, if you look at it discuss about flag bits and how these flag bits are set and reset. So, if you are able to answer this and if you are able to answer this of course, this in instruction is met. Use of flag bits to design conditional statements that is again. Uh, this uh, if, if indicating the use of flag bits to design some instructions. So, it is a synthesis objective. So, after the after doing this unit when you will be able to as if you are answering the question number 3 that you are designing newer newer instructions some instruction sets for a processor based on these flags then basically you, you are able to satisfy the synthesis objectives of designing conditional statements.
and whenever I talk about program status word, so whenever this flag bits etc. that means flag bits are you can uh, whenever you are synthesizing on the use of flag bits for design conditional statements it implies that you have to know that when I am uh, jumping from one context to another then everything has to be set and basically what are the values like intermediate registers etc. which has to be which are in a program status word what it contains basically where it is to be set this will actually satisfy the objective on comprehension. So, in fact, uh, just after this unit, you will be able to meet these two objectives which we targeted in the beginning. So, uh, this actually completes the uh, second, I mean, the seventh unit of this module. And next time, we will see how to use these instructions, these jump instructions or conditional instructions to execute one very important part of your programming paradigm that is actually your functions and procedures. Thank you.